Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Mega unboxing today, um, as you can see by the mega size of the box. So this is going to be a little bit spontaneous. I'll perhaps save, ah, this one's kind of interesting to me because as you all know, as you've probably seen, I have reviewed pretty much all the CZ457s. There are a couple of gaps in that system yet, and this is one of them. I saw this at the game fair on the sportsman stand the other week. Just pop that out of there, because that's probably the paperwork. Um, and this is the MTR, which is match target rifle. And it really does blend. This is one of the first 457s that became quite commonly available. And it's one of the last ones I'm going to do a review on. But it's quite, a, it's quite an unusual and interesting blend, actually. In fact, between sort of old and new sort of looks. Because you've got a very sort of 70s, 80s deep walnut stock on the back. Nice stippling the grip. It's like a, you know, like a prone target rifle. Nice broad forend. It's got a fully floating barrel on it. And, of course, you can get into that squeeze the trigger and it's a beautiful rifle for shooting um, and let me just you can find the bolt in this package here because it's hiding in its white bubble wrap or it's clear bubble wrap you get all my first impressions on these videos because i don't really tend to read instructions or do too much research for doing an unboxing but there we go so you've seen you know all the videos this has been sent to me um, in 17 HMR which I assumed it will be in a 2-2 format actually because I was sort of thinking it's going to be a match target rifle but 17 HMR in this obviously gives it a lot more range and capability and it's nothing to stop it becoming a great you know mid to mid range plinking rifle because 17 HMR is awesome it does say varmint on the stock and you know 17 HMR does embody that perfectly. I mean, if you if you look at the origins of the 17 HMR around about 20 years ago at Hornady in the US, it was designed as a low recoil, low cost, high volume varmeter for which it fulfills that role perfectly. Um, I can put sling studs on the back and the front. Oh, sorry, I can put sling on the back and the front. I've got two sets of studs, so I can put a bipod on it as well if I want to. We've got a load of stippling on the forend, which is very hand filling, and I do like that for for the feel of it. It's got sort of old. It's it's quite similar to the, um, oh now, what's the name of this one? It's the one I actually bought, a 457, 457, the synth, oh no, I can't even remember what it's called now, and I've actually gone, it's, it's about three feet over there in the cabinet. Um, oh dear, LRP, 457 LRP, long range precision. This has got certain ergonomic similarities to that, but of course it's totally visual in its looks because it's a walnut stock. But you get the superb CZ45 bolt, the superb CZ457 trigger, which I won't dry fire on screen because some people seem terribly afraid of why I do that. It doesn't bother me. And there are certain elements of the 457's design which I think make it even more durable long term. Safety catch there, bolt release on the left side. It'll take five or 10 shot magazines. I think there's only five shot in 17 HMR. But if you were to swap this to a 22LR, because of course you can swap the barrels on these 457s, you could put the 10 round mag in it. I think they even make a bigger one as well. Screw cut the front, it's probably half inch UNF, so we can put a moderator on that. That barrel I think is either 18 or 20 inches long. But let me just tell you about the dry firing thing again. If you look at the firing pin in the nose of this bolt, if I just decock that, you can see here, there's a big flat top on this firing pin right there which bumps up to the big flat area on the back of the barrel so you've not got the chisel tip here impinging on the edge of the circumference of the chamber which would damage it perhaps long term yes that's what people are concerned of i've never had that with older 452s or 455s but people are concerned about that um, but this one i do feel that that almost double it's belt and braces, it almost doubles up on your long-term security of not damaging the tip of the firing pin. So when that comes up, that is not hitting the chamber, that's hitting the back end of the butt, the stock of the steel of the barrel. So you're not going to have issues with them. I need to just recock this now. And then that will go back in the rifle, and there we go. So this has got 11mm dovetail on it for scope, or is it 9mm dovetail for scope? 9mm dovetail for scope on there. So put some rings on this, put that element scope on it, and I think this is going to be one of the, uh, the first ones that gets a full review, um, because I'm going to dry fire it. 
and it's got the usual 457 excellent trigger feel. Now, to, to be fair, they often bed in a little bit over the first few hundred rounds, but with the gun completely out of the stock, they are fully accessible and you can tune them. Um, I like that. You don't have to tune it immediately. It will work fine, but over the lifetime of the rifle, these are all mechanically, um, you know, mechanical steel components bearing upon each other within there. And wear and tear does happen, it is a fact of engineering. So the fact that you can adjust these CZ triggers long term just is another fact that goes to show me that CZ are, you know, thoughtful, responsible gun makers, not just marketing pouring guns out left, right, and center. Because I look at the, I think of some of the CZs I've got or shot, or the older Brunos that I've got shot, that 20, 30, 40 years old, they still work beautifully. The design of the stocks changes a little bit. Um, and the barrels are all cold hammer forged now, and these are interchangeable barrels. But the point is, they all still work perfectly. They don't sort of wear down or wear out. So um, this looks like a rifle that will follow that design ethos to the end of days. I'm just going to find out which way around this went back in this box now. One thing I will say is that being a walnut stocked rifle, I will have to just make sure I'm a little bit more delicate with it over the term, over the course of the uh, the review project because I don't like to, uh, to damage them. But I think anybody ex accepts that, you know, if you want, really want a, a, a tool that's going to get a bit of rough treatment, bumped and banged around, go for the synthetics, don't go for the original walnut stock. And uh, that is life. So, right. Like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell. Remember, your comments drive my videos. So go through to the end of the video, have a look at the video channel sponsors, and thank you for watching. Bye for now.